Subsequent to Trump winning the presidential election, I mentioned in our prophecy updates that I really believe Trump may in fact speed up the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And I'm here to say today that this certainly seems to be what is even now happening. Uh, doesn't, doesn't go unnoticed in the media how they're all talking about how quick this trip was, how historic this trip was. Only a hundred plus days in office and already he's going to the Middle East and the first president to make his first stop in of all places, Saudi Arabia. There's of course no shortage of pundits making the comparison between Obama going to Cairo, Egypt, which by the way was very prophetic. We've talked about that on numerous occasions in our prophecy update. But this is different. This is different. I realize that the jury may still be out concerning Trump's success in obtaining the ultimate deal. We, we just don't know. <laughs> but here's what we do know. There's no question concerning the verdict that will be reached because that's the verdict that will be reached when said ultimate deal has finally been reached. Suffice it to say, it's not a matter of if, but when. And perhaps more importantly, how soon, how fast, and perhaps maybe even more importantly, by whose hand it finally comes. What do you mean? Well, by that I mean, we don't yet know whether or not it will come by Trump's hand or even his son-in-law Kushner's hand or by someone else's hand. But what we can know and should know is that it is coming. And it may in fact be sooner than any of us realize. How do we know this? Well, we know this because of prophecies such as Daniel 9.27, Zechariah 12, 1 through 3, and Joel chapter 3, verse 2, which I would like to quickly read beginning with Zechariah 12. The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. And listen to this. All who would heave it away, give it away, move the boundary stones, divide Jerusalem, will surely be cut in pieces. If you cut Jerusalem, I will cut you. Though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. I would submit that this is what we are seeing happen now, now, now. Daniel 9.27. Very important prophecy. Then he, speaking of the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant, enforce by force an existing covenant. Some believe the Oslo Peace Accord. With many for one week, seven years. But in the middle of the week, the three and a half year mark, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering in the newly rebuilt temple, which is presumably part of this peace agreement, 
And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. This is what's known as the abomination that causes desolation, where the Antichrist will perhaps sacrifice an unclean animal there in the newly rebuilt temple, which is an abomination, and it will cause the desolation of the Jews who will realize at the three and a half year mark, this is not our Messiah. And it will bring them to a true saving knowledge of their true Messiah. Joel 3, verse 2, quickly. This should make the hair on the back of our neck stand up for those of us who still have hair back there. But (laughs) I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel. Why? Why them? Oh, (laughs) because they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. Let me bring it to a close. 